Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reselling Rhythms. Today's live stream video, we're going to discuss packing and shipping fragile items with my guest and have her share her tips and techniques to help make us more successful and profitable resellers. Every Wednesday, I have a live stream and I interview other resellers and have them share their tips, tricks, and techniques to make us more knowledgeable and profitable resellers. If you are a reseller or interested in becoming a reseller, then you are in the right place. Let me just hop in the chat and say hello to a few people, guys, and we will get this party started, as I like to say. Wanted to welcome Randy. I know he was here earlier. Um, R1J1, Liz, Jules, thank you for being here. I hope you're you're watching live, or if not, you're watching the replay. I appreciate you being here. Jennifer Hayes, Michelle, thank you so much. You know, uh, Sharon is... Uh, is in in the in the show so she's not moderating so if you and randy can handle that i greatly appreciate that so uh like i said we'll get started very shortly um i'm going to introduce sharon and have her introduce herself tell us a little bit about herself and then we will get into the uh packing and shipping fragile items and the notification just came through so that's great guys we're doing we're doing well let me let me just uh come in this and give me one second here uh today's reseller is sharon and she's with Red's Outpost Flipper. And we're going to bring myself and Sharon on. And we'll do this and that. And we're good to go. Sharon, why don't you introduce yourself to the people that don't know you as of yet? Um, my name is Sharon with Red's Outpost uh, Flipper. And I've been selling online since 2000, um, but seriously, since 2003. Uh, mostly what I sell um, are not clothes, they're breakables, um, a lot of art, uh, and I pack and ship nearly all of it myself, all the way up to the furniture. So that's why we're here today is to talk about how I do it. I know that there are quite a few people who are interested in branching out from clothes and non-breakables, finding amazing things for a dollar or two at a yard sale. Um, it's about yard sale season now and turning around and flipping them uh, online for 10, 20, 50, 100 bucks. Um, just recently, I found uh, uh, a print, a real print that I got appraised and I sold it. I bought it for $1.25 and I just sold it for nearly $500. So these are things if you're OK with shipping breakables that it can open up a whole new opportunity for you to make money reselling. So that's why we're here. Okay. Do you want me to switch to me while, while you get set up? You want to just set it real quick or you, how you want to do it? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But one, one thing I wanted to mention real quick huh. is before we do that is I wanted to show my bubble wrap. Now this roll is only about a half a roll, but it's a big roll. It's twice this size when you buy it. So when we talk about bubble wrap, we're not talking about just a few, you know, tiny bubble sheets. We're talking about when we buy them, we buy them in the big roll because we get it cheaper if we buy it in bulk. And also, you're going to go through a lot of this. So you want to have a lot of this on hand. So let me go ahead and get set up. Okay, guys, so we're going to have Sharon's going to do it right on her desk here. We're going to get everything a little organized here. We, we've done a couple test runs and uh, should be very interesting. Like I said, I, I know I'm hesitant to ship uh, fragile things, and uh, Sharon has some tips and techniques. And uh, basically, one of her main techniques, at least in my opinion, is use a lot of bubble wrap, like she just showed you. And you, you can buy bubble wrap in bulk. Uh, she buys it from a local shipping supply store near her. But you can buy it on Amazon and uh, Uline, et cetera, et cetera. But Sharon will get into that shortly. But uh, oh, what's the item you're going to do first? You said you're going to do. Um, yeah. So what I've done is I have, I have six items here. Okay. And for um, time constraints, just to make sure that you're not watching me cut and prepare the bubble wrap and all the squishiness that goes on with it, I've gone ahead and just pulled it all together to show you how I do it. So it's so it's, it's pre-cut, right? Yeah. It is. Okay, so the first thing you want to make sure that you do, and you're probably already doing this with your clothes, is that you want to bag everything. And this is the famous bread bag. I use a lot of these. I guess 
that we used to call them bread bags. Now they're bread bag size, but they're cheap. And what you do on every single item, including your big paintings, including your furniture, you want to make sure that you bag it. Bagging it is important because if this box gets wet, inside is this item. And this item doesn't need to get wet. So what this is, and we're going to do a small item first so I can just show you that I bubble wrap everything. These are designer sunglasses. So you take them, you do this, you wrap them, and then for this item, I would just wrap and then wrap this one and stick it right in there. See how easily that closes? Yes. That's not going anywhere in there. It's not going to move. And if it's dropped, it's not going to matter because it's insulated by these half inch bubbles. And then I always put in my little thank you. Seal it up. And uh, let me interrupt Sharon for one minute. Just a reminder, guys, uh, those of you that have eBay stores, remember you have to use your uh, first quarter eBay supply coupon before the end of the month. So uh, the end of the month is the 31st. So we just have uh, roughly a week to use that coupon. So if you haven't used it as of yet, make sure you use it before it expires. Got it. Okay. And then I would put my label on. And that's it. This is one of my standard boxes that I buy. And I keep several standard size boxes on hand. And this is an eight by six by four. It's good for little trinkets. It's good for even large jewelry. It's good for glasses, things like that. So you see what size box that is. So are there any questions about this or I'll move on to the next one? And we're uh, not, not as of yet, I'm monitoring the chat. So if there are questions, I'll, I'll make sure that you're aware of them. Got it. Okay, we're moving on to the next one. We're gonna go bigger. Now, here's something that everybody should be interested in reselling. It's a Hallmark keepsake ornament. This right. is a good one. When you find these at yard sales, I bought this one for a dollar at a yard sale. This thing is gorgeous. It will sell. At Christmas time, for sure, and probably before, because there's Chris. It's Christmas in July. I was going to say Christmas things sell year round. I mean, you know, if you if you're new to reselling, you'll learn that quick enough that you get, get your Christmas items listed. Exactly, exactly. And you see how flimsy this box is. If you can see that, yes. So you don't want to just put, you know, a for example. one of these bags around it and ship it because this will break. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is put it back together and then you want to put it in a box. Okay, Michelle had a question. Do you tape all of the edges? Do I tape? I do not. Okay. Because I have, no, I do not uh, because I bag everything. Yes. Okay. So I don't feel like I need to tape the edges. I've actually had people say that they don't like having all the edges taped because it's, mm -hmm. it's harder to get the item. Okay, I've got a little crunchy space here, so I'm having to move things around. It's harder to get the item out of the box. Let me let me interrupt you for one second. Uh, we, we had discussed this pre-show, um, talking about the boxes that you purchased. And uh, I know you're going to end to it a little bit later that you can reuse other boxes such as Amazon boxes, but We're you prefer. Next. Okay, yeah. fine. I just want to make okay. sure we discuss the, the box and then the thickness of the box. And Okay. We're going to have three boxes here. Um, we're going to have gotcha. six items, three boxes that I purchased, three boxes that are Amazon. Gotcha. Okay, okay. so you can, you can bag this up any way you want. I usually try to make it real pretty because I feel like you know, the the opportunity to make the, the buyer happy and to make everything look real nice is, is right here with me. So what I'll do is I'll make it look, you know, I'll tape it up real nice. And so that way, when they get it, it's going to look like right, this. Right, it's going to look like that, yep. 
it'll look real pretty. Yeah. Presentation is a lot, guys. Uh, you know, I, I've said before in this show, uh, oh, under I should say under promise and over deliver. Uh, exactly. you know, and presentation is a big part of delivering. You know, it's part of the sale. Mm -hmm. So here's another box that I keep on hand. What I'm going to do with this. Uh, I will find some bread bags or one J one and I will show them to you in a second here. I have them handy this all the time. Here. I don't want to knock yeah. over my camera here. <laughs> and then I'm going to put my thank you right on top. See how that fits? Yep. This item here is not going anywhere inside here. You can drop it. This is this is mirror image. I always get screwed up. This is what I use. These are just the Walmart bread bags. The label might have changed a little bit. Uh, it works out to like two and a half, three cents a piece after tax. So that's what I use. Exactly. I buy mine off Amazon because I go through them. I you through you them buy off. bulk. Yep. Yep. I buy in bulk. So here we go with this. It's all in there. The ornament is inside its own packing, and then on top of that, I have provided all these big half-inch bubbles all the way around it. This item is going to get where it's going without breaking. And, and by then, the way, my, my bags are 10 inches by 14 inches, the uh, the Walmart bread bags. Mm -hmm. and then we'll tape it up. And all I do to answer your question, you know, um, somebody had a question about the tape. Is I yes. tape right here. I just tape right here. Um, in fact, I can tape this one up and show you, just like I did the other one. And I make sure it's tight. I tape right here. That's it. Because everything is in a bag inside, it's not going to get wet. If for some reason this ends up out on somebody's doorstep in the shrubs which has happened to me and the sprinkler system hits it it happens all the time you know if it rains and it's sitting on the front porch and there's you know the rain blows in or something this box is going to get wet plus we're only in the spring we get a lot of rain in the spring so and then uh yeah. you know delivery people they don't they don't care they make that delivery and amazon may take a picture of it but they Put it on your step or your porch, and they're gone. They don't care if it's raining and pouring. And they're gone. They don't stick it in your door. They just they just leave it on your front step or your porch, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, so absolutely. You, uh, as a seller, you want to make sure that your item is protected when a plastic bag. You want to make sure. Yeah, definitely. You want a really good experience. And that way you'll get followers and people coming back. You could tape all this here, but if this item, if, if, the, if the cardboard gets wet and the inside item is not bagged, the inside item is going to get wet anyway. And a lot of people will want to save that Hallmark box because that's part of the collection. And if that gets wet, you're going to get a return. So always bag your items inside. And here, I really don't feel like I, I've just never done it. No one's ever complained. Even here, I don't do this either. This is another box that I keep on hand at all times, which is my 8 by 8 by 8 And I get these from Amazon or from Uline. Um, I get all my boxes from Amazon or Uline, and I buy in bulk. So, but I like this because I buy from yard sales. I'll buy little vases or figurines or collectibles like this, holiday collectibles. And this is a good size box to have on hand. And if you only keep ten on hand at a time, you'll start to see, you know, which ones are gonna. You're you'll start to see which ones you need to keep in stock based on the kind of items you like to buy. And sell. Randy had a question. Do you always use Scotch brand tape? Always. Okay. I prefer it too. Which, which, which variety do you use, typically use? The reason I use this. I, I, I use the moving and shipping version. Yeah, this is the one I use, the shipping. Okay. The reason I do this, right. I've tried all different kinds of tapes, and this is right. the one I only have to tape once. Gotcha. Otherwise, I'm wasting tape, so I may as well spend a little bit more money and get the good stuff. John, John has a thing, but I, I think that's kind of geared to what he's doing, and uh, I'm not all that familiar with what he's shipping. He has a, he has four four by four travertine ties that he decorated with circuit vinyl cunnel. He guess the best way to ship that is to use bubble wrap it and pack in a box. About two and a half pounds to ship nine ounces each 
tie. It's a so, tie, a men's tie. No, it's it's some kind of. I think it's kind of some kind of a mechanical tie. Tie, uh, yeah, okay, travertine. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm tiles. I'm sorry, tiles. <laughs> That's my glass. I need a prescription. Tra travertine tiles. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> not a tie. Tiles. Oh, yeah. Tiles. I, yeah. So, so that's fragile too. Obviously, tiles can be fragile. You're going to want to use this half inch bubble wrap. You're and use, use and why don't you discuss a little bit? We're going to discuss that why you use the larger bubble wrap versus so the smaller bubble wrap. Oh, exactly. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this off my desk because I'm crunched for space here. Hey, guys, you got to forgive me. I'm still working off the laptop. I told you guys I bought a new computer, but uh, that was quite a, quite a few hours. I need to invest in a monitor as well. So once I get that monitor up, I'll be able to see my screen a little better. I'm spitting a little bit now <laughs> on the laptop screen. Okay, let's look at the difference here. I don't buy the the little bubbles like this. I don't buy these. This came in something that I ordered. But look at the difference in these two. Big difference. You've got your half inch, and then you've got these tiny little things, little bitty tiny bubbles versus these big ones. You're going to use a whole lot more of this tiny bubble wrap than you will this. This stuff, I mean, you might throw two pieces around it versus eight or 10 or 12 even of this. This The little bubble wrap, I would say, is good for little jewelry that doesn't break and things like that. I only buy this. Even for my jewelry, I'll cut this in half and then I'll wrap my jewelry piece inside here and put it in a bag. And I've never had a breakage with that. So I just, I kind of feel like this is just not good for the, you know, purposes that, that I need it for. I would right. use bigger stuff. And I have sold a lot of tiles. In fact, I've got some Delft, um, Winter, summer, spring, fall tiles right now on my eBay store. And I'm, I would plan on putting them in the big wrap and putting all that in a box. So, yeah, I would put a tile here, put another wrap over, another tile, another wrap over, another tile, put another. I would put three or four. Those four are going to go together like that. And then I'm going to wrap around it. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Right, you're show and that right. Put that in a box mm -hmm. if that helps. Absolutely. Okay, next. Now what I'm going to do is I went ahead and wrap this up first, and then I'm going to unwrap it for you. See? Yep. You can't really see anything in there. You can kind nope. of make out that there might be something. If you can kind of make out that there's a little image, it's okay. But if you can tell what is in there, then you've got a problem. And I'll explain that. And I know I used a whole lot of this stuff. And I hope this noise is not killing the microphone. So we're in headphones, it probably is, but that's right. It probably <laughs> is, exactly. Okay. Just turn your volume down, guys. <laughs> My dog runs out of the room when I ship. She can't stand right. it. Okay. Here's what we've got. We have these two, very beautiful. I bought them for a dollar a piece. Um, they're in the eBay store right now, I think. I don't know. They comp it probably the set, $30, $35, something like that. They're just gorgeous. Okay, and so what you're going to do, if you can see this, and I'll try to do as best as I can in this little space. Yeah, my office is really small. I run two businesses out of here. So I have to really be resourceful on how I do it. So I pre-measured what I needed on this for sake of time. But basically, I would just roll my wrap around it until I felt like I can't see it. You can't see it. Now... Let's talk about this box. Let me, let me interrupt you for one second. Uh, we had discussed prior that you like to wrap the bubbles, have the bubbles on the inside part. You want the what? bubbles on the inside because this is smooth. If you have the bubbles on the outside, this is bumpy and see how they stick. It sticks you're when you're trying to insert it into the box, correct. Yeah, you want it to be smooth to slip into the box. It's just easier. So see how that slips in there really nice? 
And then, right. there we go. I'm ready for this one to go out. Now this is an Amazon box. And we were talking about that and the differences. Between yeah, Justin, I, let me interrupt you for one second. Justin, Sharon's going to talk about penis. She might not like what she has to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> not, not the kind of ease, the kind of ship with. <laughs> now, look at no, the I'm difference sorry. between this 864 that I buy that you just saw me put the sunglasses in and this Amazon box. They're thinner. The Amazon is thinner. So you're going to want to use more bubble wrap. So see, look at this box. Look at that. If you look at that compared to one that I buy, mm -hmm. Big difference. it hardly moves. This one's just thinner. Amazon is thinner. And yeah, that's Amazon okay. boxes are quite, quite a bit thinner, right? But, you have but to it's free. It. So if you can get Amazon boxes, we all buy from Amazon. And you can get your family and your friends to save you their extra boxes, you're going to save some money there. So what you want to do, though, is make sure you have the good bubble wrap. Yeah, I mean, because like Justin said, that's a huge difference. It is. It really, I got a little bit of feedback. You didn't move your speaker, right? Me? Yeah. I haven't right, don't, changed anything. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't changed anything. I'm still standing okay. in the same place. Okay. 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 Yeah, no, the speaker's over there on the other side. Okay, so here we are. And see, when they open that up, it's going to be intact. Look, it's not moving. And you see all that cushion? You could actually tape this up and throw it across the room and hit the wall or the floor, and it's not going to break. But, yes, I would tape this up. I would tape here, and I would tape here, and I would tape here. But I'm not going to do it because I'm not shipping this one. And then I would close it up. First, put my little thank you in there. Oh, 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 she does. She does, Justin. She bounces them off the tile. I mean, that's that's her go-to. She bounces them off the tile, off the cement on her front porch. She's she's a Texas gal, too, by the way. Yeah, and honestly. <laughs> Justin's in Texas as well. Every single one. I My my uh, my home office is right outside my uh, front foyer that's on the inside of the house. And so, you know, the step up to the inside and there's tile there. It's all concrete slab. I take a box when I'm done with it and I throw it in there. Right. And it hits the floor. If you can't do that, your, your item is not going to get where it needs to go intact because we've all seen what happens to our items. Um, they get tossed, they get dropped, they get bounced, they get, Whatever. I mean, some items I had something get, I think got run over by a forklift, which My that forklift, ended up yeah. in a claim. But yeah, they're, they're warehouses and, and these things happen and, and the delivery people are on a schedule and they drop things and, you know, it happens. And so you just, you want to make sure if you don't think that your item is going to be able to bounce off of your concrete slab or your garage or the, you know, sidewalk outside or your driveway and not break, then you really need to get some more bubble wrap in there. Well, so the advent I of the a... and then I do this, and guess what? If I don't hear any shaking, I'm good. Go ahead. Well, with the advent of the uh, the, the ring type doorbells, the door, you know, the, the video doorbells, we've seen a lot of uh, you know delivery people what they do with boxes, throwing them on the steps, throwing them around their their delivery vans, so throwing them over fences. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely want to make sure that your item is very well wrapped. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so is there a question? Uh, yes, uh, Adam Record Crate says, uh, have you ever shipped, oh, uh, again, it's real small print, 10 by 78 RPM shellac mm -hmm. records. So like, that's a special item, but Adam has record stores in uh, North Carolina and uh, he ships a lot of records. So he just want to know if you ever shipped a, a, I guess it's a 10 inch 78 RPM shellac record. Have I ever shipped them? No, but what I yeah. would do is I would use the same technique that I've got here. This technique is something that, you know, after looking around and looking around and watching videos and reading eBay, you know, tips and things, I just created this t technique myself. It, it works for me. It's what I do. Um, lots and lots of bubble wrap. So if I were you, I would um, put some sort of, let's see. I have it in here. I mean, you could even do some sort of tissue paper 
or a thicker paper in between, you know, all of the records or the records that have like the, like the butcher box, butcher block paper. Yeah. The butcher block paper would be good. And then you can take your bubble wrap, your big bubble, and then you can put one of these in between each one also to kind of cushion it for when it does bounce around and that way it won't get damaged. You know, put one here, put a record here, put another one, put another record, and then put all that in a box. Have you ever had any experience with U-Haul boxes? Michelle's not a fan. I'm not a fan either. Right. She says the only boxes worse than Amazon boxes are U-Haul boxes. Yes. LOL. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know when I first got into business, people were recommending using U-Haul boxes. I never purchased them. Uh, yeah, somebody told me that too, I think. I think they did. Probably Casey. <laughs> Probably. Okay, so we have another one. And this is the old go-to 888 box. Here's a, here's a, here's a uh, pro tip from Steve and Judgment Care USA. Protect corners of books that sell for more than a few bucks. Good tip. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. You yeah, don't you don't you don't do a lot with books, but yeah, I know you for, when you first started, you used to sell books, right? I did sell books, and I bubble wrap them too. Absolutely, right. and right. then you tape around the edges, and so that way the tape reinforces the corners. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of this stuff at yard sales for a dollar. Okay, and I I did a, I sell a lot of these, a lot of this kind of thing, but I got a small one here because I got a small space that I can show you this. So this would be like your little trinkets and things like that that you see at yard sales. What I do is I take a piece of paper, some kind of tissue paper, and I stuff it in there. And then I'm gonna bag it. And then I'm going to wrap it. So you can either wrap it this way or this way. I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. And I try to do it tightly, so I'm pulling the wrap so that my roll is tight. You can kind of see a little something in there, but you can't really tell what it is. So I would tape this like this, tape this, and tape this. So basically, you can take this after you've taped it and throw it across the room. And it Dustin, wants you, Dustin wants you to demonstrate. They don't have to do that. But. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> Dustin Grimes fine wants you to demonstrate. He wants to see you bounce it off your cement floor. You want to see me bounce it off the wall? <laughs> Then you take it and you stick it in here. And of course, when it's taped a little better, that's going to be perfect in this box. Just like that. Let me let me just interrupt you for one second. This is kind of a little off topic, but I'm, I'm monitoring the chat. That's okay. Uh, and uh, there was questions about shipping guitars. And uh, thank you, Anna, for sharing your experience. Uh, and again, I, I guys, I used to watch a ton, a ton, a ton of um, reselling guitars. Uh, channels and um videos and live streams now i watch a lot more youtube i still watch you know i still monitor youtube chats as far as you know and uh, you, uh facebook groups as far as reselling but yeah i would definitely go to a record store and uh and i'm sure you would know a lot better than i i, I think they have special boxes just for shipping guitars and my i i believe i could be mistaken Adam. you can correct me please if i'm wrong but i think they actually will pack guitars for you if you want to want to ship them and i, I think the fee is nominal but you, you can put that in chat on if you would please i'd appreciate it i'm sorry sharon go ahead no it's okay it's okay so i would make this a lot smaller by compressing it with the tape so it'd be basically look like a football size and then you shove it in here tape it up that's not going anywhere no, no. now why do we do this why do we wrap it so that you can kind of see that there's something in there a little shadow but you can't tell what it is you can't see the detail 
don't quote me on this, but last I, and, and this has been this way for years, last I saw, if you have a breakage or a problem like I did where I thought that that 50-year-old Emerson fan had been run over by a forklift, uh, FedEx paid me for that because I wrapped it so well that you couldn't tell what was in there. Now, I think the forklift crushed the box and crushed the fan, which was crazy because it was steel. But they had to pay me because I wrapped it so well. So for a couple more cents, you know, pennies, you can wrap this well. And if there's a claim or a problem, you take pictures, you'll get your money. I mean, it's just, that's what I've seen so far all these years. Don't quote me on it today, but that's what I believe. And this okay. is why I wrap it so well, because they say, if you can't see the item inside, then it's protected. Okay, a couple things I don't want to forget. Um, you had told me when we were doing pre-show uh, a while ago about the fragile stickers. I see it sitting on your desk there, and you, yes. you put that on the corner of the box. You say so it sews on two sizes. Why don't you explain that for us? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me get one of these that I have sealed up, and okay, we'll, we, we'll just go ahead and do it. Right, and there was a couple other questions or a couple comments in the chat. Uh, Randy says, so you use a lot of cubic boxes. That would be pretty yep. much correct yep yes i do uh and, and then there were several was, sizes i keep on hand this 888 is one of them and then steven judgment care usa says he uses nine clear tape on bubble wrap so the customer sees it uh in my in his humble opinion it makes it easier to unwrap and uh reduces breakage that's that's a great tip thank you that is a great tip thanks steven Appreciate okay, that. so Appreciate if that. I am going to want to do fragile stickers, which I do fragile stickers on a lot of things, this one I think is wrapped well enough that I don't have to do it. But if I'm curious about it, what I'll do is this. Hold on, I'm getting another one. So right. now I'm using one sticker. I buy the big ones. Buy the big ones. These are glow in the dark. I mean, you can't miss this. They're not red. They're green. Glow in the dark. I put half of it here, half of it here, so I just saved a sticker. Now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to put half of it here and half of it here. So now I've got this side and this side covered, that side and that side covered. If I really wanted to get serious about this box, then I would do something like this, or I would overlay it something like this for this. So I could do that and then come over here and I could do another one that would like be overlaid from here to here, from here to here, or from here to here. But this way, any way you look at it, it says fragile. And again, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk out there that all this says is throw me against the wall. But you know, if you're wrapping your stuff well enough, throwing it against the wall is not going to matter. You should be doing that before it leaves your house or your office anyway. If you do have a claim and you have fragile stickers, especially the big glow in the dark ones like this, and you have enough of them, your claim is going to be a no brainer and they're going to pay you for it. So spending a couple of pennies on a really nice sticker and then wrapping it side to side to save you a few more pennies is it's just what I do. And it right. seems to work. Works for me. Now my my namesake uh, record crate Adams says Sharon, other than a single potato chip, joke joke, what is the most fragile item you've ever shipped? That I don't know. Well, you'll, you'll come come to you while you're, while you're It'll doing It'll come to me. Yeah. I haven't even thought about that because most everything I ship is fragile. That's a good You ship question. a lot of fragile items, yep. I, that most everything I ship is fragile. That's a good question. Right. Okay, let's move on. Guys, if you have any additional questions, I appreciate you popping the questions like you have been in the chat, and I'll make sure Sharon sees those or hears those. It's not going to say I'm sure you're hearing from me. Uh-oh, now we're going to do the mask. Okay. Now we're going to do the clay art mask. These are really popular. I started out with several hundred of these, and I think I'm down to 30 of them. So, yeah, I have quite a few still. I'm really good at shipping these, actually. After all that, you think I would be. And knock on wood, none of them are broken. Because I use really good bubble wrap. Uh, we need to turn this around so it's looking at you. Right. Yeah, it's probably bad luck if it's not just looking away it's from us. probably bad right? luck. I know. I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Michelle has shipped sheets of glass, okay? 
I shipped a lot of pictures with glass, but not sheets of glass. But I remember Michelle saying that in another show. I do remember that. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Getting ahead of myself. Always got to wrap it in that plastic. Mm -hmm. Just to protect it. You can even put a piece of tape on this if you want. Yeah, Randy, she has a hookup at a local uh, shipping supply. Not shipping. Uh, shipping U line is good. Say, and U line is good. And, and you and I, Randy, have discussed <laughs> offline that uh, the issue I have with U line is I don't have anybody that's close. And uh, it's expensive to ship, but Sharon says she has one like within 20 minutes of her home, so she can pick up as well. You like, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, there she is. Supposedly, uh, I, I, I have put a lot of uh, bubble wrap because I'm not doing again. I want to get into shipping fragile goods, but supposedly Sam's Wholesale Club has very good prices on bubble wrap. Mm -hmm, I've heard that. Uh, and I had I had taken some pictures. Let me just. Uh, Keep going, Sean. I'm just going to just want yeah. to make sure. So I would taper here, taper here, you know, just to make it more compact. Because, again, you want to be able to bounce this thing off the wall. And then you want to put it in here. Put it okay, in here. Now, now look at this. Uh-oh. And that's an Amazon box. We have a problem here. Now, the top of it is good. But we need some more on the side. So we would do some fillers. Now, you could do your eBay wrap because we have a lot of that. We're getting that free. Or you could throw in some more bubble wrap or the other thing you want to do is get everyone to save you all of their pillows, their air pillows, because you could use those to fill in the gaps here as well. And then once you do that, well, it needs a little bit more, but you get the idea. So what you do is probably put one more on the top. And now it's right, let, let me ask you a question, too, as, as far as re reusing those boxes and all. Um, would you typically remove all that tape? Or are you going to just put your tape over top of that? Because if you use clear tape, it's still going to show the Amazon tape. Yeah, I do. And then, and then I know. And see how you have the barcodes on that? I know some people put like a like a magic marker line through that barcode. I don't know if that has anything to do with shipping. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, it, it does. Hold on a second. And then you have another one on the side, too. So I guess you would have to run a black marker through that and put a sticker over top of it. I put eBay yeah. tape over the colored eBay tape. but No, so I keep these on hand, the big ones. And... This one is the one you would want to mark. This really doesn't matter. Okay. But yeah, you would probably just do something like that. Yeah, Amelia, I took a picture when I was at Sam's, and it's uh, it's the large bubble wrap, and it's uh, our price was twelve ninety eight for uh, two hundred forty feet times twelve inches, works out to five dollars and forty one cents per hundred square feet. So that, apparently, that is a good price. That is really good because um, for one hundred and twenty five. Um, square feet of the 12 by 12, you know, 12 inch by 12 inch, right. um, half uh, inch bubbles, I'm paying $16. Oh, okay. So that's a great price then. Good. That's good to know. And okay. that's cheaper than Amazon. You're paying like 17 to 19 on so, Amazon. I mean, now everyone has different access to different types of wholesale stores. You have mm -hmm. Costco, BJ, Sam's. But uh, yeah, I had heard that that was a very competitive price. So uh, I guess we're going to buy my bubble wrap then. Well, I guess I'm going to have to get a Sam's card now. <laughs> because as much bubble wrap as I go through, that'd be worth the membership. Yeah, I mean, if you're, yeah, absolutely. And and you know, you use uh, rewards credit cards. Uh, I have a Sam's credit card, and again, again guys, I, I share my personal experiences and my tips and tricks as well. Uh, and I actually paid extra for the uh, the plus membership. I think it's like an extra forty dollars per year. But uh, the main reason, again, you guys, you know, I have some health issues. I did it to get because I got a good price on generic uh, prescriptions when I didn't have. Uh, prescription insurance uh but anyway when you get the when you have the plus credit card uh, i could get these numbers from mistake but it's five percent back on purchases at um sam's club i believe it's three percent on the credit card and a two percent on the in-store purchase so it's five percent you get five percent back on gas so it, it pretty much pays for the membership 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Okay. So Michelle, then Michelle is there? sharing. I'm sorry, guys. Michelle is sharing what, what she ship was the most fragile. Okay. A pair of five foot candelabras. I can't even see my print my prints are small here. Uh made of delicate milk glass flowers, and I did not have a pack that order. Dare pack that order. Okay, so what would you do, Michelle? You took it to a like a pack and ship kind of store? Five foot a candle, okay. Made from milk glass. Okay. Wow. That is big. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'd ship some things that scared me. But you just have to be real careful with you know putting all the little bubbles around all the little details. wait that was a question too about things like uh somebody uh jules had put about how do you protect uh, protrusions and uh appendages and very small blown glass figurines i guess like wings and things on angels and that, those type of things or noses that are protruding like this there you go something like that okay um what i would do is Hold on, let me get this one out of the way because we're almost at the end. We have one more to go. But what I would do with this, hold on. So, Michelle, you, you, you took it to a, to a shipping uh, shop. I'm assuming it's a shipping store. You, you didn't pack it yourself. So, and this is my technique, guys, and this is what has worked for me. This may not be what other people tell you. I don't know. But... I would do, of course, I have to put my baggie around it, and then I guess we can tape that. I'm going to cut some of this. You're going to get yourself some big scissors. These are fabric scissors. Really good for fabric. I got these at. We have Joanne fabrics here. I don't know if you guys have it. But yeah, can, I think they're pretty much everywhere. As long as you're not far from it, from a you you know, commercial also district. On Amazon. I'm sure Amazon sells everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I would start doing this. I would put my bubble wrap in the different areas, and then I would tape here and here. And then I would just keep doing that because what your the idea is is to fill in the gaps. So there's a gap between here and here. What about your what about your secret secret tool? You haven't shared that yet. Would My you use that on there? Tool? Yeah. Which one? What did you show me the other night? The big, the big roll, remember? That. Yes. Is this it? Yep. So I well, have uh, well, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the wall, wall with the uh, plastic wrap. Yeah. Yeah, I have this. So I can't live without this. And Mike at Flipping Goodies uses this. I saw one of his um, shows. And for example, instead of tape, if you didn't want to use tape, like um, Adam for your records and any kind of boxes, I use this um, saran wrap or plastic wrap on vintage games because you don't want to tape the box uh, in case they're saving the box you know that's part of the collection you just do this and these little rolls are so cheap i buy them i don't know six bucks or something for two on amazon you can't beat that and they last forever look at that and all they have to do is just pull it off or cut it and whatever is underneath like you know your record your record album covers or your vintage Monopoly box or something like that does not have tape on it. And Steve said he uses a, a color tape. So I guess you, if you want to, you know, I mean, it's going to seal on itself, but I mean, to make it easier to unwrap. I guess you could piece a piece of uh, masking tape or some kind of paper tape or something on there. So it'd be easy for the customer to know where to start unraveling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I have uh, a lot of questions. And if you look at my feedback, people say that, oh, my God, I should teach shipping. So it's just something you have to play with and, and see. You want the experience to be great. 
all the way through and all the way, you know, when the buyer gets the item, just like you just said, you, you want them to look at it and you don't want them to go, oh my under, God. Under promise and over deliver. Too much tape on here. Yeah, exactly. You want it to be beautiful. You want it to be amazing. And you want them to say, wow, you know, this now, is Jewel, great. Jewel says they have a five inch rose glass horse with long legs, gorgeous, but is afraid to ship it. Bubble wrap. Put your in in that case, I would I would put a bag and then I would put paper, some sort of paper, any kind of paper that you have. Um, this paper or brown craft paper around it. You know, do the whole thing like this. Cover in before you do that all the little nooks and crannies with these little pieces. This is what I do. You know, there's the nook and cranny there. You want to cover that, get it all ready, and then put it in this. And then from there, you want to bubble wrap it. You don't want to be able to see this through the bubble wrap. It'll get there. And it'll be fine. Did you freeze your slither? There you go. No, you go. Okay. I am. I was just waiting for you to okay. say. Okay. If, no, if no. That was, was that... No. Okay. Yeah, and there's a there's a comment from Jules. Um, that dispenser actually was from Victoria Adventures and Reselling, that who I had on my show. Um, mm -hmm. I, Jules, I don't know if you're. I think I've seen you in my chat before. If you, I think you're relatively new to my show. But if you're not, I apologize. But um, yeah, Victoria recommended that, and uh, Sharon feels it's a game changer. She really loves it. And uh, I went out and bought it. But Victoria said, "Hey, this is right. a great thing. I bought it. I love it. I can't live without it." And then I got this stuff too. I mean, I'm learning things everywhere I go. Yeah, again, guys, these are people. I mean, three. Yeah. Sharon knows these a lot of these resellers independently, but she's meeting a lot of them through my show. And like I said, you, you, we learn from other resellers, and that's why I have this show to help them share their tips and that type of thing is invaluable. Um, you know, when I had Bill on, and he reminded us about doing offers to watchers. Again, that's a game changer that eBay introduced. So. You bring other people on. They have other. They have other ways of doing things, like sharing with the packing. She has her way of doing things, and uh, share share with you and myself, and uh, helps make us better and hopefully more profitable resellers. Yeah. So I mean, I learn one or two things at least every time I, I watch. You know, one of these. Um, you know, use what you want, and you know what will work for you in your business. Because what I'm doing may not completely work for you. You may have to modify it some, and that's okay too. What is they? What are they saying? I can't see it. Yeah, I know it's real small print with my glasses too. <laughs> I think I think it's just top. Oh, I pull, it. roll back the end, the interior tape, so it leaves a flap. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's that's a tip on any any kind of scotch tape or anything. Yeah, I love pull the little end of it so you, you get the end of it. Yep. I love and, that. So it that's does that for the customer as well. So when they grab it, they can just pull it back. That's again, Stephen, that's uh, that's uh, under promising and over deliver. That, that's again, mm -hmm. that's a that's a pro tip. Absolutely. And that's another that's another thing I do. If there are anything protruding, like I sell a lot of candlesticks, you know, the holders, and you know, they're really tall, and then they have the flat top, and somehow the nail's sticking through. And you put the candle on. Well, you're going to want to put your bubble wrap on there, but I also put a note saying there's a nail here. Be careful. And I've had people send me note messages back and saying how thoughtful of you to tell me because I'm opening it and I'm I'm like so excited I got this. And I would have hit my, you know, hand on that nail. So it, just what you're saying, any little thing you can do to make the experience for them very pleasant. Now, Doris, welcome to the welcome to the show. She says she wraps a piece of cardboard over the uh, mainly like where our uh, piece sticks out, like a cup handle. So I guess she's like putting a piece of cardboard, and then she's wrapping that bubble wrap over that. I guess you don't I typically do that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. Okay, so last thing that I have here, and I don't have enough space here to do a really big picture, so I just went ahead and got something small, but this is fragile. So those are tiles, and it's a little puzzle thing. And So that's, that's kind of like the tile we talked about earlier. I mean, it's not, not identical, but mm -hmm. it's, it's similar. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Exactly. So what I would do here... And I would do that with the tile. I would do it with Adam's records. Everything goes in a bag. And if you're afraid, some people are, 
of, of the bag sticking, if it's, you know, high humidity or something, you can wrap it in eBay tissue paper first and then put it in the bag. Some people say that's better. I've never had a complaint, so I don't know. So then I would just start wrapping. So you've got this. And you have your wrap here. And again, you want to try to pull it tight. You don't want it to be loose. You don't want that item to wobble around in there if you can help it. And here we are. You can tell something's in there, but you can't tell what it is. So we would tape it. Tape, tape, and tape shut really well. And then we're going to put it in our box. Why don't you discuss those boxes too? You, you there's in various sizes. This is what? An Amazon box. Oh, that's the Amazon box. But you had the other boxes that were like the book shipping boxes you were using before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the flat boxes that you formed. Yeah, yeah. I was going to use that for this. But right, it's right. Not big enough. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I do use these, and I get these on this one. I I got this shipment on. Uline, I think. It says Uline on here somewhere. Okay, so when you wrapped it with bubble right, you felt that was, was, wasn't was wide enough, big enough. Yeah, this says Uline. So okay. this basically is a book box. So you can use these for all kinds of stuff, too. And these are really cheap. It, it is kind of thin, but you're using the half-inch bubble wrap. And as long as you follow the guidelines on that, what I've been talking about, these are fine. Amazon boxes are fine. USPS boxes are thin. They're fine, too. Use the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap will save you. So, yeah, basically, this comes in a flat, and you can make it any size you want. See all these creases, all these, what do they call them, pre-cuts? Yes. And you just do that, and you tape it up. And I, in this case... I pull these flaps out and tape. Some people just do that, tape it here, and this is how I end up getting it, which to me, that's kind of cheesy. I would rather pull this out, tape it nicely, and over here too, because again, presentation of the box is important too, not just the item and whether it gets there, you know, correctly and without breaking. And that's... Yeah, uh Adam, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this, Adam, because when I when I put it up on the screen, it's kind of hard to read. I'm gonna read it. Uh, Adam says, Sharon, just to clarify, vinyl records are different than shellac records. I ship vinyl records almost every day. My question was about shellac records, with, which are uber fragile. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ooh, I would have to say then you would want a thick box and a lot of bubble wrap. I mean, you would probably want a real thick box, and you can get thicker boxes. Um, the bigger, thicker boxes that I buy, I buy those at Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're twice as thick as these that I buy here that I've shown you. And I mean, they're really, you probably have thick boxes or you know what they are. They're, the thick boxes are twice as thick as this. You can't even move them. And then use a lot of bubble wrap. I don't know what else to do with that. Yeah, it's especially special animal, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would do. I can't think of another way you could do it unless you built a box, a real wood box. Right. I mean, it depends on how much, you know, profit you're getting on them. It could be a wood box. You may just go and either know how to, you know, have your own saws to be able to cut your box. I have built boxes, crates. I have built crates for furniture. So I know how to do that. And I have my saws that I can cut them and I have a drill and all that stuff. Um, but depending on how many of these you're doing, you just may spend a Saturday making little boxes or get the really thick boxes from Amazon or from Home Depot or Lowe's. Steven dropping another pro tip. He says, uh, bike stores get loads of open side foam tubes to protect bike frames. Mm -hmm. They are a lot like foam pipe insulation. So I guess, I guess you can do some dumpster diving or, or I guess you could even go in, I guess. But Sharon, you said you have relationships with some of your, uh, not a store, but you have a, a manufacturer, right, that you go to and you get some supplies for them? 
Exactly. Okay, so what I do, and that's in my 10 tips to shipping fragile items that I have. That's, I was going to do that here for free. Here shortly. Yeah, so what I do, and, and I've also put this on my Instagram as, um, I, I think I have a, a post up there about this too. Manufacturers and furniture companies are great to go to. Uh, call them up on the phone, say, hey, what are you doing with your extra packing? What are you doing with your extra boxes? For the most part, they have to get rid of it somehow. And usually they have to pay to get it gone. So what they'll do is they'll find a day like a Wednesday or Thursday. And if you're on the list, they'll call you and say, come get some. I, I've got so much cheap packing from them. I mean, one of the places that I go, they manufacture um, uh, airplane parts and so all of their stuff is delicate too the electronics and the packing is amazing and it's free you just have to show up and get it so yeah i found them on craigslist um i started looking around just where can i get free shipping packing materials and stuff you can go to craigslist and look or if you have a a furniture store in the area where they buy a lot of furniture and put it on their showroom floor what are they going to do with the boxes what are they doing with all that bubble wrap and all that foam and all that other stuff? You know, they got to get rid of it. They either have to have it taken away as trash or they have to recycle it. Yeah. And exactly. then either way, they're, they're paying to have it removed. They're paying. Exactly. So you're, you're basically it's win win. They're, you're doing them a favor and they're mm -hmm. obviously helping you out. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get on their list and you find out when they have this because usually they don't want you coming every day. So you just, you know, figure out when, you know, kind of make it a, a whole thing, like a once a week thing. Couple yep. things. Uh, Jules uh, had a question: the cheapest place to get those fragile stickers because uh, Walmart doesn't have them, and they're, they're they're apparently I think they're pricey is what what they're saying. And uh, and and, and the, those bread those red bags I get at Walmart, uh, they're just they're the value brand, whatever they call them. They're called Great Value. They're like two and a half, three cents a, a bag. Um, so. those I get at Amazon. You get yours at Amazon. You get the sticker, and you, you get your bags and your your plastic bags and your stickers mm -hmm. at Amazon, right? I do I get it all there? Yes, I do. Okay, and then Craig was saying, Landshark Picker, because what Michelle I mentioned earlier about using the pool noodles okay. to cut them in half and wrap things up, and uh, again, you get them at the dollar stores. The pool noodles when when they come they come in the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is Randy saying? Newspaper printers have plenty of. Donage at cheap prices. Okay, there, there's, a, there's a pro tip. Donage is like packing materials okay. and, and newspaper printers. Okay, uh, and again, guys, let me let me share this with you real fast. I'm going to do a, a share screen, uh, show you Sharon's tips. And again, I have Sharon's Instagram, and I have her um, her, her sign up for her, uh, her tips and tricks, basically. Her, mm -hmm. eventually, eventually, she's going to be doing a... Um, podcast as well so you're going to yeah, want to sign up the other thing i wanted to show you that is in my tips and tricks is this these are amazing hold on hold on one second oh, okay i'm doing a screen share so guys again this is this is sharon's uh tips and again just she has a, a i have a link i should say a description of the video so you can just uh, send your email address and there's no charge and she will send you her her list of uh, tips on shipping uh, packing and shipping breakable items mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also have her Instagram you're gonna want to follow her on Instagram as well okay you just so yeah that first pro tip there is this hold on one second okay 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 it's this what this is, is a little cheap laundry hamper. They come in different shapes and I just usually get whatever is available at a yard sale. I got this for a buck. If you're short on space and you wanna keep your packing and your ship, you can put this under your desk. If you wanna keep your packing and shipping stuff available so you can pack and ship really fast, do this. I have four of these and I keep them because I don't have a lot of space in this little office of mine. I keep them stationed around the room. So I have my um, 
bubble wrap in one, extra bubble wrap. I have my little flat boxes in another. I have my eBay tissue paper in another and it fills them all up. And then I just go and grab things as I want and get my packing done fast. Because if you're not careful, packing can take a long time. Right. And that's not, it's not time well spent. Okay, uh, guys, are there any additional questions for Sharon? I'm going to just make a couple of announcements and then we'll, 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 I'll check the chat for any additional questions for Sharon. Do you have any packing questions for Sharon while we have her here? Uh, uh, cu the last couple, thing you wanted me to tell about was this. And you can make this. These, these are my little. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm going to put you on full screen so they can see that. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, you can make these on your word processor, Microsoft Word, whatever you have. And just cut, cut, and you've got four up. So I don't pay for these. I just they're they're the, they're the thank you that you my little thank you. I put one. Oh, in so you put in every package, package right? Out. Yeah. Okay, so so again, guys, I have uh, Sharon's Instagram and her uh, her link where you can put her click on it and send her your email to get her tips and tricks. Uh, and eventually, she will start a podcast. Uh, also, guys, as I said before, I'm always looking for other resellers to interview. Uh, I've been relying mainly on my friends to help me out, Sharon and Randy and, uh, and Mike flipping goodies. They've been very generous with their time. And, uh, like I said, last show, and, uh, you know, maybe some of you may have heard it, may have not heard it, but, uh, I watch a show from a professional athlete that used to be in Philadelphia and he says, our time is our most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to thank Sharon for giving up her time and sharing it with us and, helping us be more profitable and successful resellers. Uh, in addition, guys, like I said before, uh, there's cost involved, time involved in this, you know, your resellers, you know, we're, we're, I'm doing this mainly to help you guys out and help myself out. But again, there are costs involved. So if you feel you're getting any value out of this, I have some the PayPal link and I have a buy me a cup of coffee links that you, if you feel you're getting some value out of this. You can help me out and, you know, donate a little bit to my, to my cause, so to speak. So again, again, I'm always looking for resellers to add to the, uh, to the show guys. If you had anybody or you, you would like to come on or you have somebody you think would want to come on, if you can reach out to them, I have my, all my links, my, my social media, my Instagram, you can message me, you can message me through my, uh, my Gmail account, which is Adam's exploits without the apostrophe at gmail.com. I'm always looking for people to add to the show and, uh, and, and share their experiences because, uh, you know, Randy and I have chats offline and we talk about things and, and Randy's an extremely successful reseller and a wholesale business over the years, done a lot of different things. He says, Adam, he goes, I'm always willing to listen because maybe somebody does something differently and I can pick up some tips. Like we did the show on, if you didn't see it, guys, we did the show on sewing remote controls. That's something that, that Randy picked up and I picked up from watching other shows. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of a cool item. It's, 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 you're not going to get rich over it. You know, with it, like you know, like uh, Sharon and I discussed, but it's an additional thing to sell, relatively easy to source, easy to store, and uh, they seem like they turn over relatively quickly. Thank so again, you. if you haven't seen that video, that that's uh, that's in my my playlist, and I also have a playlist uh, where you can play my videos if you if you're if you're listing things or you're you know packing things, and the, you just play it in the background. If you find something interesting, you can just you can just stop what you're doing and then watch the video part, but you can actually listen to what, what the show in the background. So that would be a help for the channel as well. Uh, let me just double check, make sure there's no other questions in the chat. Uh, talking about pool noodles again, which is a great tip. It is a great uh, tip. Yeah. You pool can find those also at yard sales for really cheap. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They're talking about pool noodles and they're talking about pipe insulation. Again, you know, pipe insulation, obviously you can get it at plumbing supply stores or some, I guess you have to have a wholesale, you know, or a license, I guess, but you can have at Home Depot and Lowe's and whatnot. Mm-hmm buy that as well but uh yeah those pool news that that's a great tip i i, I know um it is. craig had mentioned that but I, i've seen that in other you know videos and chats you know for a dollar you, you cut them in portions of what you need mm -hmm. i know i know um they're great for pictures mm -hmm. yeah and I, I know um who was it prof sales when he was selling a lot of shoes they would take the pool noodles and they would cut them the size and they would stick them like in boots and they would stick it inside the boot and would keep keep like the, the form of the boot, you know, so there was oh, like, a leg, like a leg in the boot when they were storing it. So I thought that was a great tip too. Great so idea. At, for a dollar, you know, you, you cut, cut mm -hmm. it to size. So, so guys, that's what you come here for, for those kind of pro tips. <laughs> okay. And exactly. obviously all the pro tips that Sharon, uh, the and wisdom And we all bond. learn all the time. I'm still learning and I've been doing it since 03. Like I like to say, you know, you know, I have all these different phrases and sayings. Uh, any day I learn something new is a good day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Okay, let's see here. Uh, you saved hard foam from a renovation plus shoes boxes. Okay, absolutely. Uh, Doris had a question. What was Doris's question? Thanks for monitoring it, Michelle. Hey, Chris the Goose. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Hey, Chris. Uh, came in late. What is your recommendation for shipping glass picture frames? That would be that last one I did. You just want to refresh your memory? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be this one. Uh oh, they're coming to get Sharon. Yeah, I know they are. <laughs> they found out that I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I would do. Half inch bubble wrap. Pretend like this is your picture frame. Put it in your in your plastic. And put it in your plastic bag. Bag first. Cheap plastic bags. Just so long as you're trying to keep it out of the weather. And then you just want to let me turn this around. Wrap it. And again, tight. again, always have the bubbles on the inside because it makes it easier to put it in the box. On the inside, wrap it tightly, not loosely. So pull and wrap, and then tape here tape here you want it to be firm and tape here so the idea is you can't see what's inside here you can see kind of a shadow of something you want to wrap it in so much bubble wrap that you really can't even see what's inside of it you can't see the detail and, and then, you're, then you're going to once you pack it in your box you're going to bounce it off the ground and it, if it doesn't make any noise do. right <laughs> so you put it in your box and then you tape it up well, when you when you get Sharon's tips, you'll see this at uh, one of her and last then you things. Throw it on the concrete and bounce it across the room off the wall. And she if it says, doesn't shake, you've done your job. She says, after you seal the box with tape and a label, drop it on concrete or tile of floor. If you don't cringe and the package doesn't rattle, then you did a great job wrapping. That's your package right. will be tossed, thrown, dropped, banged around, and dropped some more on hard surfaces. Mm -hmm. Trust me. You want to do the drop test before it leaves you. Yes. I do it with every package. Per tip. Yep. <laughs> every package. Inside bubbles. Yes, genius. See, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't thought about that, Jules. I'm thinking yeah, that makes sense because if you put the bubbles on the outside, it, it kind of sticks when you're sliding into the box. Mm -hmm. We put them inside, it, it mm -hmm. protects it and it slides easier into the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we have Sharon on talking about shipping. Okay, guys, again, I'm always looking for people to come on the show. So if you have somebody or you're interested in joining the show, please reach out to me. I'm easy to get a hold of. My social media is all listed in the uh, description below. Again, yep. your time is your most valuable asset, all everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And Sharon, obviously, thank you so much for being my friend and helping me out and doing a great show. It was Thanks, great. Guys. Thanks for your we'll show. See you next time. Okay.